beautiful! This is Joana Saira bringing you another video inspired by dancers from all over the world. And this one is about the three biggest mistakes Oriental dancers do when they dance the lyrics in a song, the words, the stories inside of a song, the three biggest mess-ups that I have witnessed in Oriental dancers of all levels, even in professionals. Ooh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to tell you about the mistakes and I'm going to tell you about what you have to do to avoid them or to correct them, okay? Now, before I dive into this video, let me tell you a bit about myself. If you don't know me yet, I'm a world-renowned oriental dancer, teacher, choreographer, author, and I'm also the creator of the pioneering Joana Seda's World and Joana Seda's Online Dance School, delivering authentic Egyptian dance personal discovery and empowerment. Now, if you have not subscribed to my channel, it is the moment to do so. Subscribe now and turn the notifications bell button on so that you know every time I have new goodies coming into the channel. Press on bell button right now. You're doing it? Good, good, good. If you like this video, like it and share it with your dance peeps, please, because it helps grow the channel and it tells me more about what you like me to present in the channel. So if you like it, I create more and I create better according to your own preferences. Last but not least, join our newsletter, Joana Seda's World Newsletter, if you want to become an insider in our community, if you want to be the first to receive our news, gifts, discounts, and special content I only share with my beautiful people. Find the link to do so in the description box below this video. And now let's dive into the three biggest mistakes oriental dancers do when they dance the lyrics. Now, before I give you the mistakes, I have to cut ourselves a slack. Why? Because dancing lyrics is perhaps the hardest part of Egyptian dance. There is the instrumental part of the music or the, an instrumental piece, and that has its own challenges, right? But then comes the lyrics. And that is a totally different level of skill, totally different level of sensibility, totally different level of interpretational abilities that is going to be required from the dancer. So let's be honest, dancing the words is, in my opinion, the most challenging but also the most beautiful part of learning how to do Egyptian dance. Also, let's acknowledge that most dancers have a hard time with lyrics because they don't speak Arabic. So if we're talking about Egyptian or Arabic speaking dancers, they have the benefit of understanding automatically what the lyrics are saying, right? And I do remember before I spoke Arabic, before I moved to Egypt, when I didn't understand what the lyrics were saying, I, I do remember how hard it was and how challenging it was to find the lyrics translation, to memorize the translation. I do remember that. So from the moment I started knowing how to speak Arabic, from the moment I understood the lyrics automatically, there was a shift, there was a flow in my dance that was not there before. So let's cut ourselves the slack because it is hard to dance lyrics. And if you don't speak Arabic, you do have, uh, let's say, an added difficulty or an added challenge that you have to recognize it's there, okay? Now, what are the three biggest mistakes? The first mistake is ignoring the lyrics. Oh my God, it's like, they're not there, they're not there, I don't care, I don't care. I'm gonna put my psycho killer smile and I'm gonna go through the music as if the lyrics were not there. <laughs> this is crazy, but it's very frequent. So what happens here? First, disrespect for the music, like I don't care. This talks about disrespect for the music, for the culture behind the music, and for yourself as a dancer. Like, you don't care enough to know what the hell you're dancing to. You don't care enough about yourself and your dance and your craft to even go on Google Translation and check what the hell is going on, <laughs> you know? No, this is a big mistake. Take your ego out of the equation. It's all about the music. When we learn Egyptian dance, we are working with music. We are reading, we are adding, we are co-creating with the music. So you have to take lyrics in consideration. You cannot put your psycho killer <laughs> automatic smile 
and go through a song disregarding what the song is saying. That is not going to work in any way, okay, in anywhere. Now, what happens as a result? Very often you have dancers smiling and the music is saying something very sad or even tragic and they're smiling. It also happens that when you ignore the lyrics and you pretend they're not there, you're really not exploring your emotional range, okay? You're not exploring your inner world. You are becoming a flat dancer. What is a flat dancer? It's the dancer who is always like this. It's flat. Nothing is happening. It's like a doll, uh, an automatic pilot doll that is going through the music like a doll, not like a person who feels different things, who expresses different things, who is alive, fully alive. Okay, so that's going to harm your dance. It's going to harm your communicational abilities and it's going to harm the dance itself. Okay, and the way people perceive it and value it. Now, mistake number two is what I call the lip syncing. Ha! Lip syncing. Look, unless you are running at RuPaul's Drag Race and RuPaul asks you to lip sync for your life and don't mess it up, there is no place for lip syncing in Egyptian dance. Now, rest assured, Every once in a while, if you do speak Arabic, naturally, you will sing one or another word, naturally, but not because you have to and not as a habit. So dancing the lyrics is not about singing the lyrics, all right? So you don't have to dance the lyrics and show that you know the lyrics by lip syncing to the lyrics. No, if it comes naturally here and there, good. It's usually happening like that, okay? I am aware that when I'm dancing lyrics every once in a while, especially if I love the song, I will sing a little bit of it to myself. But it is not a standard. It is not the default mode. It is not something that I put in my head. I have to sing the lyrics or I have to lip sync to show that I know. No. The way you show that you know the lyrics and that you know what to do with the lyrics is through your dance, through your energy, through your face expression, through your body posture. Our bodies speak. That's dance. It speaks. So we want your energy, your body, your movement, your expressions aligned with the story, with the words. We don't want you lip syncing for your life. <laughs> okay? So third mistake is what I call the dramatic poses. Oh my God. Okay. So for sadness, we have this. For tragic, tragic feelings, we have this. For joy, we have this. For fear, we have this. For um, nostalgia, we have this. For passionate love, we have this. No. No, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> Stop right there. There are other kinds of dances that have codified movements. Movements that represent a specific emotion or a specific word or a specific experience, like Indian dance. Indian classical dance has that. So if you learn Bharatna Natyam, one of the classical Indian dances, for instance, you're going to learn mudras performed with your hands and face expressions and eye expressions that actually mean a specific word or emotion or figure. But that is not the case for Egyptian dance. We don't have codified movements. So when you want to represent tragedy, you don't go into tragedy mode like a bad theater actor, <laughs> okay? You actually have to feel your feelings your own way and to express them in an organic way, in a non-automatic, non-programmed way. You cannot choreograph feelings and you cannot choreograph your face, okay? You can choreograph movements and dance steps but there is a side of Egyptian dance that is spontaneous. It is organic. It is you allowing your body, your system, your energy to react to the music as it wants to react. And that's what makes it real. That's what makes it honest. And that's what makes it powerful. Okay. Now, what can you do to avoid these mistakes? It's basically doing the opposite of what they represent. So care about the lyrics. If you don't speak Arabic, 
ask a teacher who speaks Arabic to translate the lyrics for you, or go on Google. Nowadays, there is no excuse. There are lyrics translations all over the place. So get your lyrics translated if you don't speak Arabic and connect to the lyrics on a personal level. See how much of this story is my story and memorize at least the meaning of each phrase. You don't have to memorize word by word, but get the concept, get the key points in the story into your head and relate to them on a personal level, okay? The second point you can do to avoid this mistake is obviously to stop lip syncing, to stop wanting so hard to show that you know and just enjoy the process of dancing the stories inside the songs that you are dancing to, okay? Don't, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. You don't have to um, copy an Egyptian dancer who sings. You just have to be yourself and you have to connect to the lyrics on a personal level, okay? And dance them to the best of your ability. Last but not least, Forget the formulas, forget the codified movements, forget the passionate affair. No, <laughs> Egyptian dance thrives on honesty. It thrives on truth. It thrives on organic movement and organic feeling. So although we can choreograph the movements and dance steps, we shouldn't choreograph the feelings and the face expressions. Allow that part of your dance to surprise you. Allow your face, your body, your emotional body to react react to the lyrics, to react to the, to the words, to the story as it wants. Surprise yourself and surprise your audience if you have an audience, okay? Instead of going for set formulas that are quite ridiculous and do not serve you or your dance, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. Then again, if you did, offer it a like, share it with your dance peeps and feel welcome to join our school, Joanna Saida's Online Dance School. We have a course, a very special course on how to dance the lyrics. It's called How to Dance on Kalsum, Lyrics Special Edition. You're gonna find the link to that course in the description box below this video. And if you join that course, you're gonna have way more information on how to dance the lyrics and overall how to become a better communicator. You're gonna love it and I will be so happy to see you there. Ah, we're done. We're done. Have you subscribed to the channel? Have you done all I asked you for? Okay, good. Comment with me. Do you like dancing the lyrics? Is it hard? What is your biggest challenge when you're dancing lyrics, when you're dancing the story, the words in a song? Let me know all about it in the comments to this video. I will see you very soon. Until then, receive all my love and my usual kiss. Mwah.